Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants. And yeah, we've been working on this BGP uh, Auto Discovery VPN demo for a little bit. I took some time off. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but then I realized today, I'm like, you know what? I really got to wrap this up. So uh, this is going to be a short video because we did everything in the last video on this side of our topology. Okay, we went ahead and created a IPsec network. All right, and then we pointed IP addresses to those IPsec tunnels, and those are IP addresses that the um, IBGP protocol can directly talk to, and we made a route reflector using BGP, and we made this one being the, the server and these being the clients, and they reported their, their routes to us, and then we turned on the AD VPN settings, and yeah, we, we tested it out, and we saw how uh, something that is in spoke two uh, could directly talk to spoke one after um, after it established the connection the long way. So uh, everything worked. So, But our goal is to eventually get it to work with two home systems. So uh, this one, we are going to do the same. So literally, it's going to be identical, but now it's going to be on this side of our topology. So as you guys can see, I went ahead and I... Uh, I added some graphics here and some IP addresses just to make it a little bit more clear of what we're doing, but essentially we're, we're just going to do exactly everything we did in the last video. So, But this time, to kind of speed things along, uh, I went ahead and added another machine here that's running Windows, all right? And that way I can use cool stuff like uh, Notepad++, okay? And then uh, the topology guide, and I put a link in that earlier on one of my earlier videos, this is the guy that I'm following from Fortinet, okay? So all I did was pretty much copy and paste the, the CLI commands and stuck them right here in my uh, Notepad++. And then I did things like change the internal to port one or the WAN to port one. And I also matched up my IP addresses the way that they are. So you know what? I am just gonna drop these through the CLI and uh, get this side configured in moments. So just, uh, yeah, so um, instead of, you know, typing them out through the console individually. So before I do that, though, I honestly have no idea if this is going to mess up my BGP settings, okay? Because uh, that was not a part of the uh, topology guide. That's something I did on the side. So for some reason, if we change our peer ID number and things like that, there's a good chance that it's going to stop working, okay? Okay. Um, Unable to contact server. Well, that's cute. That's not a good sign. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll just come from this side of the tunnel then. And I'm just going to make sure that I have a default gateway in there. So um, just as a backup. So right now, if I go to my my routing monitor, I mean, I do have a quad zero in here to learn from BGP, and we did that in an earlier video. I'm just going to, for the sake of being safe, right, uh, come in here in my network, and I'm going to make a static route for that quad zero, and I'll just give it a higher distance, and that'll be my backup. So, uh, right, so there it is, and we're gonna say port one, all right, and I'll just give it a, a administrative distance of, of 30. So that way, if we do lose that BGP pairing, we don't lose our default gateway, just as a backup. So, and just to confirm that, I'm gonna go down to monitor, I'm gonna go to my routing monitor, and as you can see, it didn't kick this one out because it does have the lower distance, all right? So, all right, let's see if my CLI commands worked. So, like I said, instead of just manually typing them, I went ahead and I did them in Notepad++ first. So I have no idea why that's having a hard time connecting to it, but I guess we'll find out here. So let's go to Hub1. Yeah, that is not liking. That is not liking uh, that connection there. I wonder what's going on here. Let's take a look. So. Uh, let's do a little IP config. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, let's do a ping 10.200.1.254. All right, so I can reach it. For some reason, I can't reach the other side of that FortiGate. So that's kind of weird. Um, let's go ahead and take a look why. Let's go back into here. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go to our interfaces. All right, sorry about that, guys. Okay. I mean, technically, I could just drop from here, but I have HTTP access, HTTP, all right, 10, 10, 1, 1. For some reason, it's not 
giving there for some chance. So I have no idea why. All right. No, it's getting there. Well, that's kind of weird. I don't know why the connection was refused. Did I have SSH on there? Let's take a look. No, SSH is on there. Hmm. Let's try it one more time. All right. So there we go. Let's go. Port 22. Open. Yeah, I have no idea why that didn't work the first time. All right, here we go. Now we're in the the command. All right. And I'm just literally going to take my configuration that I put out on my notepad. I'm just going to copy and paste it right in there. All right. As easy as that. And I did that in the command prompt instead of my terminal. Wow, guys, I'm like failing big time. There we go. Gosh. <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. This is why I should really practice these things. Let's go to uh, spoke three now. All right, admin, password. Okay. And then I have a spoke three. Wow, I'm just batting zero. Here we go. Copy. All right, and we'll paste that on there. Okay, looks good. And then let's do our last one, spoke four. And like all I did was, was like I said, use the guide and switch out the parts that were relative to my topology here. So uh, spoke four, admin, password, okay. And there we go. So hopefully that worked. We should just go ahead and uh, test it. So are you guys ready? Let's go ahead and uh, let's go down to our monitor and let's go to our routing monitor. As you can see, we have additional BGP settings. I knew it, by the way. I knew that my static one was going to clunk out because the configuration made us do a new peer ID and the new peer ID isn't synced up with the PF sense. So we're going to have to fix that maybe in a later video. So, but as you can see here, it made the tunnels. It went ahead and connected them already. Hey, that's pretty slick. All right. And it looks like our BGP route reflectors are working. Okay. If we go to our IPsec monitor, look, it even came up. That was pretty slick. All right, so, but let's test our shortcuts. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and go into one of our PCs that are sitting here in spoke three, and this is gonna be some remote connection out there. Um, and we're gonna do a, uh, well, let's do a show IP and make sure we have an IP address, which we don't. So we'll do a DHCP, we'll get an IP address, and then we'll ping the internal gateway of our hub, all right? So just to test that, so let's do a ping 10.20.1.1, no, 254, all right? And because the tunnel is up, it made it, okay? So not too bad. And if you look at the latency here, okay? So, but now let's go ahead and ping that spoke four. And if it works like our last video, okay? If it worked like our last video, we should get a ping because it took the long way. The timeout was for it to send the shortcut request for the auto discovery VPN. And then these remaining three pings right here were taking the shortcut. And that's what the auto discovery VPN does. So it looks like it is working. So let's go ahead and confirm that by um, logging into our hub. I mean, into one of our spokes. And we should see a direct VPN connection made for it that we didn't configure manually. It just automatically did the auto discovery. And that tunnel should stay up until that tunnel times out too, which is kind of slick. So here we go. And there is our, our tunnel that was to the uh, hub. And as you can see, we only have a one, but if we go down to monitor and we go to our IPsec monitor, we actually have a VPN, VPN zero, going to the remote spoke. And that was the one that was created using the auto discovery VPN. So there you guys go. Like I said, short video. It was exactly what we did. 
and I explained everything in the last video step by step. Here I just used uh, CLI commands to, to do it quicker. So in those CLI commands built up the, uh, the IPsec tunnels on all three of them. It also did the firewall policies, okay? And it also did the uh, BGP route reflector. Now, another caveat that I have to mention here too is because I already had uh, uh, firewall policies on here, guys, remember that when you create a firewall policy in the CLI, uh, you start with number one. Okay, well, we already had one, so if I would have went ahead and just dropped the configuration like it was using the guide, it would have overwrote my first policy that was already there. There is nothing wrong with giving it an obscure number. So what I mean here, and let me pop back into my uh, Windows machine, is to make sure that the firewall policies didn't overlap each other, I just created a 10 and a 20 here instead of a 1 and a 2. All right, so, um, and that way, uh, let's go back to this guy here. When we go to our firewall policies, all right, you'll see that it'll have those ID numbers of 20, of 10, and that way it didn't overwrite my number one that I first created. All right, and another caveat too is if you're using the free VMs from Fortinet like I am, and that's why I have to wrap up these videos is because I'm running out of time. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, they do not let you use those higher hashing and those higher uh, encrypting algorithms. Okay, so when I did my um, when I did my CLI commands here, don't forget to change it to the DES MD5. All right. So other than that, that was really the only two catches that I ran across. Other than that, make sure your interfaces are matching up, your IP addresses are matching up, and yeah, that was a straight copy and paste from the. Um, from the um, cookbook that I got from Fortnite. So, all right, guys, that is it. When we do our next one, we will go ahead and we will connect these two together. So if something from spoke one wants to talk to spoke four, it will go ahead and forward that request, not only uh, to the hub here, but across our autonomous systems to, to uh, hub two and send that shortcut request. That's going to be our next goal. Hopefully I'll get that up either today or tomorrow and I'll see you guys then. So have fun.